Let's go from Quid to Rap 8 Jackson to Wonderboy Thompson. What a 180 that is. Uh, Steven Thompson is joining us on the phone right now. Wonderboy, how are you? Doing good, man. How about yourself? <laughs> I'm doing great. Congratulations on the win around uh, nine days ago. By the way, does anyone actually say like, hey, Wonderboy, is that just like a fighting name or do, do people actually call you Wonderboy day to day? No, they actually call me Wonderboy day to day. My dad calls me WV. Wow. Chris Weidman calls me Wonderboy. He calls my dad Wonder Dad. That's amazing. <laughs> it's funny, man. It's funny. Yeah. Nobody really calls me Steven anymore. Wow. And you're okay with that, I'm assuming. Yeah, I'm all right. I mean, you know, my dad's been calling me that ever since I was, you know, since I started fighting. So, yeah, I'm used to it by now. Now, okay, so I have a lot to talk to you about. And, and you know, people who've been watching this show for the last few weeks, they know I'm very high on you and your potential. And I'm wondering if after this win, this was, you know, this was a, a career-defining win. It's, it's the next step on the ladder. Is the UFC, the, the, the brass, the PR people, are they pushing Wonder Boy like they can? Because I, I feel like you could be a movie star, a Power Ranger. You should be at like kids awards, <laughs> Nickelodeon awards. Like you should be, if I tell my kids that I cover MMA for a living, you're the first guy that I want them to meet because you just represent it all from the martial arts to how respectful you are. You got it all. You got the whole package and you're a great fighter in the cage. Do you feel, let's be honest here. Do you feel like they're doing enough to push you to the masses and capitalizing on this great success that you're having right now? You know, I never really thought of it, but I mean, yeah, I, I don't feel it, you know, man. I, I, I don't feel the love really right now, but, oh. um, you know, we'll see what happens after this fight with Tyrone and, and, and Lawler. And maybe, you know, once I have that belt around my waist, things will be different. But until then, you know, I'm focused on the fight game and getting that, you know, my, my, my goal. And that's having that, that title shot. Maybe after that, then we'll think about doing some movies or something. But, man, I, I've always, I've always you know, imagined myself doing something like that. Maybe after my, my, my fight career is over. I think that would be really cool, man. I mean, you're seeing guys, um, you know, MMA fighters doing the movie thing. I mean, I mean, you know, Quentin Rampage Jackson is like a star, man. He's like killing it out there. Yeah. Maybe you could be in his MMA movie that he just uh, told us about. <laughs> I heard that. I was thinking about it. Heck yeah, man, put me on. <laughs> so so I, I'm, I'm glad to hear you say that and I respect your honesty. Why do you think that is? Is it because you feel like you're not talking? I mean, because you look at your fights, the Johnny Hendricks fight, what you did to Roy McDonald um, and, and how you fight and you got the look, you got the personality, everything. I feel like you should be being, you should, different strokes for different folks. You know that. And, and, and yeah. not everyone can be the same. Why do you feel like you're not getting that love? Do you have any idea? It might be because I'm, you know, I'm not that Conor McGregor type. Um, I am a very respectful guy to my, to my opponents, no matter how they feel about me. Um, but yeah, maybe maybe it, maybe that's what it is. I mean, maybe, should I start talking crap or something? No, I don't know. please don't. But don't if I feel talk like crap. I started doing that now. Don't do it. People would just be like, you know what, Stephen? We know that's not you, man. Come no, on. No, <laughs> no. This is why I feel the way I do about you because you don't do that, but yet. It, it, it's one thing to be vanilla and to be boring. It's another to yeah. be the way, because you come across as genuine. It's another thing to act nice when we know that you're not nice. That's the problem that John Jones had for a long yeah. time, that people thought he was acting like a choir boy, but they didn't think that he was being himself. No one actually accuses you of that. So that's brilliant. You got that going for you. And then you go back to your school. Anyhow, I'm blowing a lot of smoke up your butt. I just want to see them push <laughs> you more. I want to see, and, 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 and let's, be on, let's be clear right here and now. If you don't get this title shot next, if you don't fight the winner of that, I, I mean, this might be a lost cause. What more do you have to do? Have you been told by the UFC that you're getting this title shot next, regardless of who wins on July 30th? Have they told you that? Nothing, nothing yet. They, actually, they haven't come to me and said, hey, listen, you know, I, I feel in my heart, I feel that, you know, that they're waiting to see what happens after this fight. But, you know, my, I know my management company is talking to them now about, uh, you know, the possibilities. You know, what if somebody gets injured for that fight. Will oh. I be the first one uh, in line for that shot? You know, so um, I haven't heard anything yet, man. And, and I feel if, if I don't get it, I mean, what, what else do I need to do? No, you, you should. You know what I mean? I feel like I've, I've done enough to deserve that title shot. Hold I mean, your ground. More than the guy that's fighting for it now. You feel it. So does it bother you to see that Woodley's fighting for the belt? I mean, not at this point, just because they did promise him a, a fight. Yeah. And, you know, kudos to the UFC for actually you know, doing what they said they were going to do. Um, but, man, yeah, I mean, it, after that fight, what what's going to happen? You know, you know, there's word that GSP is coming back and, mm. you know, all this. Is he, is he just looking for that one big money fight? Is he actually coming to the Wealthway division? You know, what's going on? So, uh, nothing yet, man. I feel that they're just going to wait till after this fight to see, you know, to, to tell me something. Are you going to prepare for July 30th in case someone gets injured? I mean, I... 
actually, you know what? The the Monday I got back from from the fight, I was back in the gym training. Of course, my feet were swollen. I, I, my thumb is still injured. You're supposed to be getting an MRI on it. They, uh, they told me I tore a ligament in my thumb. Oh. Um, so it's it's it it doesn't feel good right now, but man, if something does happen, I would want to be the first one out there. So so do you need surgery on the thumb? Not really sure yet. We have to wait till the MRI comes back, determine whether or not I need surgery or not. I'm oh. keeping my fingers crossed. Hopefully, I don't need surgery, and it will be a quick recovery. But you know, it's pretty painful. I can't do you know, I can't put my hand in a glove right now. I can't grab a hold of a wrist right now with it, but. Um, Man, I'm just, like you said, I'm just keeping my fingers crossed and hope, I'm hoping for the best. When do you find out the results? Um, hopefully, well, we're going on vacation, actually, this week. Okay. So we're trying to get an MRI as soon as possible so we find out what's going on with it. Hopefully, you know, when I get back, I'm right in there. If I need surgery, get it over with and uh, get it back in that healing process. Then that's the worst case scenario. Okay. Um, do you recall when you injured it in the fight? Yeah, man, I... I I believe it was the point where um, we were in the clinch and Rory almost, he kind of had me in like a tie clinch and I went to kind of push away and I had like a, had my, uh, my thumb uh, between my, my, my pointing finger and my thumb on his, on his forearm. When I went to push away, I pushed away really, really hard, really quick. And it's like my thumb joint gave away and just kind of folded back. Wow. And there's one point, I don't know if you saw it, but I look at my hand and I kind of shake it a little bit and, uh, because during the fight, if you feel something, you know it's pretty bad. Because you normally you don't feel anything. You know, you get punched an elbow in the face, you don't feel a thing until after the fight. So if you feel it during the fight, I I knew then something wrong was my was was wrong with my thumb because it was it was hurting pretty bad. Was that early? Um, I think it was second round. Second oh, round. I wow. think Into the second round, yeah. So I was feeling it, man, throughout the fight, but tried not to show it, you know, because you know, Rory's the type of guy, if he sees blood, man, he's going to be coming after you. So I had to kind of hide the pain a little bit and stay on my toes and move. So, uh, yeah, man, early on in the round, ended up hurting that thumb, but didn't hold me back. Uh, I scored it four rounds to one for you. I gave him slight edge in the first, but I could really see you winning five rounds to none. I mean, it, it, towards the end, it was getting more and more one-sided. Did you think, though, that it would be that one-sided when preparing for the fight, when you were envisioning the fight? Did you think it would go down like that? I really didn't, man. I, um, you know, I made a decision before I went out there that I was going to do the Johnny Hendricks thing. Go out there, really push the pace in the first round, try and break him in that first round. Uh, maybe not knock him out, but just kind of break his spirit. But as soon as I got out there, he lowered his stance. I just had a feeling he was waiting for me to close that gap to time for that takedown. So that first round, yeah, it was very slow. I had to kind of throw some feints out there to see how he would react and what kind of shots what kind of takedowns was he preparing for me? And then, you know, thank goodness that first round, um, you know, I kind of kept the distance away because we went for that Minari roll. Um, I was able to get out of it. So I knew he was looking for that quick takedown to try and submit me in that first round. He tried it two more times after that. Yeah. And uh, But, you know, I just kept that distance right. And uh, my takedown defense has gotten so much, so much better just from working with Chris and my wrestling coaches here. So it's given me way more confidence now to actually go out there and stand up. But, yeah, I was kind of disappointed. I it wasn't the first round and second round, but I knew I had to play the game with Warwick because he's such a technical fighter. So I was, I was happy with it. Uh, yeah, it was interesting to see him keep going back to that Eminari role in the first after the first time was uh, unsuccessful. Why do you think he kept doing that, and did you expect him to go for that? Because it was very unconventional as far as Rory is concerned. I did. I knew those guys from, you know, TriStar are really big in the leg locks and heel hooks, things like that. And, you know, just watching Rory in the past, you know, competing in jiu-jitsu tournaments, he loves going for him. So I figured he was going to go uh, just do something tricky. I know Rory, he's always evolving, he's still a young fighter. And watch his why he's been at the top of the game for a long time. He's always doing something new out there. So I figured he was just going to try something crazy off the wall, something I've never seen before to try and finish me up quick. And, uh, yeah, man, he did. So I, I called it. I called it like the week before. I was like, you know what? He's probably going to try one of those flying heel hooks wow. and try and submit me in the first round. Uh, and I was right, man. I can't believe it. Wow, that is amazing. Um, are you disappointed? Does it bum you out to hear people either boo the fight or criticize it afterwards? For me, again, and, and maybe you know, I was biased because I really was looking forward to this fight. I said it was my most anticipated fight of the first half of the year. 
I felt like I couldn't look away. Like I felt that any moment something was going to happen and I enjoyed the chess match between you two. Of course, it wasn't Lawler, Rory, but not every fight needs to be that. That's not MMA. It doesn't always have to be a bloodbath. Does it bum you out that people can't appreciate a fight like that? I mean, it, it doesn't really bum me out, but I just think people just need to educate themselves a little bit more on the fight game. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, there was a lot of guys in the crowd, a lot of people in the crowd, who maybe, you know, uh, doesn't follow the UFC. I and mean, it was the first UFC in Ottawa. So maybe they just weren't educated enough to kind of know what exactly was going on. But okay. you got to think, too, you know, the, the two fights before our fight, I mean, they were just standing in front of each other, duking it out. You sure. know, the 185er fight, that was a crazy fight, knocking each other down the whole round standing in front of each other, just punch each other in the face. Uh, of course, you, then you had the, the Donald Cerrone fight. It was a, you know, just completely one-sided fight. And, uh, Cerrone just went out there and crushed Cote. And then our fight was way more technical. It was, um, you know, it, it was, I felt like I had to be on my toes the entire five, five in a round. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It, it was definitely a, a thinking fight, like a chess match, man. It was, my, my brain was hurting after that fight. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of thinking. But, uh, uh, all the people uh, on social media who have called me up um, left nothing but really good comments. They were really impressed with it. But I think the fans that were there were wanting something just a little bit more. You know, they can't hear the commentating, so we know exactly what was going on. Uh, but it really didn't didn't disappoint me. But I just want people to, you know, maybe educate themselves a little bit more on the fight game and the stand-up and the grappling. And if that's how it kind of is, you know, in the beginning in the UFC where people saw each other, you know, the fight on the ground, they would do because they didn't know what was going on. It, it was clear that there was a mutual respect there. No trash talking. You guys seem to, you know, have a good relationship. Obviously, you're not the best friends in the world, but you've you've trained in the past, all that stuff. Was it strange at all for you to have to go through that with a guy that you like and you know have 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 been in the gym with before, have respect for? Was that was that weird for you at all? You know, that was something. Well, as soon as I heard I was going to get that fight, I was I was I was disappointed because I love those guys that try to start. Spent many years up there. They were my inspiration to switch from kickboxing to mixed martial arts. Wow. Going up there training with George. And, you know, through training with George and fighting on the same cards as, as uh, some of the guys from TriStar, me and Rory, you know, we were also managed by the same management company as well at one point. You know, we became good friends, good buzz. We never actually sparred with each other, but we, you know, we were in the same classes, drilling, things like that. So, it, yeah, it kind of sucked, man. But, you know, um, the actual day that we announced it in Vegas, me and Rory hooked up. We talked, man. We were like, you know what? It's business. We understand. Uh, you know, and I fight guys every day in the gym, and sometimes they can be a little heated. So I'm used to kind of duking it out with buddies every now and then. But, man, yeah, I knew as soon as I got out there, A, he's a good friend, but I know he's looking. He's got the same goals as me. So I'm going to give the best Stephen, Stephen Warner Boy Thompson I can out there. And I knew he was going to give me the best Steve, uh, Rory McDonald out there. And I, I wouldn't want it any other way. Could you tell when he broke his nose? Um, I did. I, I could tell. I mean, I, I knew it was bothering because as soon as I, it happened, I, I don't remember what shot I hit him with, but his hand started to come up. His right hand was blocking his nose and his left hand was kind of stretched out there trying to keep the distance so I would stay away from it. So I knew, man, those straight shots were going to be hard to hit because he had his right arm in front. So I, that's when I started throwing the uppercuts to try and tag that nose. And what's that feel like for you? Like, like do you actually feel it crush and, like as you connect? No, I actually, I, I didn't feel it. The the one thing I knew, the one time I knew it was really damaged when I hit him with that spin hook hit. Oh. I think it was the fifth round. I hit him with a spin hook and I heard a big crack, a uh, big smack, and then that's when the blood really started flowing down. So I knew, uh, I remember when it happened, I was like, crap, man, I just broke his nose again in my head, you know? <laughs> I'm out there fighting, but I don't want to seriously injure somebody, you know, sure. or especially some guy I've been training with. As soon as I hit, I was like, crap, I, re- I really broke his nose now. But, you know, he was standing right there in front of me, ready to go at it. He started pressuring me then. So I was like, man, I got to keep this guy away. You know, I can't can't let up. Got to keep going. I'm so, sure. But, I, man, he's a tough guy. I'm sure you knew that, you know, he was uh, fighting the last fight on his contract. There was a lot at stake for him. He's about to become a father, breaks his nose again. You were obviously happy and rightfully so. You deserve it all. You deserve all that success. But was there any part of you that kind of felt bad for him afterwards, given how much was at stake for him? Um, yeah, I did, man. I mean, we... We actually talked and hung out after the fight, you know, going to the press press conferences on the bus, traveling from the venue back to the hotel. I mean, but to be honest, I was I was really surprised that he was really at peace with himself. He didn't feel upset at all. Huh. I think because he knew that, you know, he was he's getting ready to be a daddy man and and bringing a you know a, um, 
a daughter into this world. So I think, I think he's excited about that, but maybe he's excited with about new things happening. You never know what's going to be, who he's talking to or what kind of, what kind of deals he's already made, but he didn't seem too bummed to be honest. Wow. Um, which surprised me. Wow. How many fights left on your deal? If you don't mind me asking. Um, I think I actually have like seven more. Oh, wow. Damn. (laughs) Okay. I was going to say, I'm not really sure. Time to renegotiate that thing. I was going to say, if you've got one (laughs) left, but seven more is tough. Um, by the way, when do you feel like it shifted for you? Because I I have a, a, an answer to this question in my own mind, but I'm curious to hear what you say. Like, it felt like you recently took a major step as far as the way the fans react to you, uh, your status in the division, your status in the sport. It, it feels like you went from just being sort of like that prelim early pay-per-view fighter to the main event guy who's on the cusp of, in my opinion, going to be a champion at some point. Do you recall when that shift happened for you? I believe it was the Ellen Berger fight. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know he had somebody scheduled to fight. Uh, I think they, they backed out. I ended up taking a spot. I knew... You know that was that was my first main event fight. You know, big deal. It was it was the, the finishing up the entire fight week. In other words, you had Conor McGregor fighting the day before. That was the Rory, Rory McDonald and Robbie Lawler fight. So I really wanted to put on a show just to kind of end the week with everybody talking about you know Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. Yeah. And um, man, that was the time. That was my moment. And I knew there was a lot of pressure going on that. I wanted to really make a statement out there and let everybody know that hey, watch out for this guy. And it happened, man. And I believe the UFC was like, dang, you know, um, you know, we put Stephen Norboy Thompson out there and he definitely stepped up. And uh, that's when I, that, and after that, that's when we started, you know, um, trying to find a fight. Couldn't find anybody because pretty much everybody had uh, fights coming up except for Johnny Hendricks. So I was like, you know what, he's the number two guy, let's go for it. And then after that fight, finishing him in the first round, that's when it really started to blow up, going on media tours, things like that. The fans started, um, you know, really started to recognize me. And, um, so I was like, man, this is, this is it, man, this is it. And I expected to get that title shot after that, but Mm. you know, then I was thinking maybe, maybe just one more, just to, just to really prove myself. So after this fight with, with Rory, they, they have to give it to me. Yes. I agree wholeheartedly. Um, are you hoping for Robbie over Tyron? Yeah, I'm I'm thinking I, I, I do want Robbie, uh, you know, for, for, you know, several reasons. A, I think he's going to win this fight. Just the fact that he's a really tough guy. He's got great takedown defense. And he's a type of fighter who just gets stronger as the fight goes on. When Tyrone hasn't, hasn't had a fight in a while, he might have a little cage rust, but he's notorious. I mean, he might, he might have changed it, but he's notorious for, you know, starting to taper down after the first, you know, two rounds. You know, he starts getting weaker as the rounds go on because he's an explosive guy. So if he doesn't finish Law in the first round, I, I think Lawler just, just, you know, grinding him out. Um, and I want to, I want to fight Lawler just because he's the guy that nobody's beating. Right. You know, uh, Condon couldn't do it. Rory McDonald couldn't do it. Uh, Johnny Hendricks said the second fight couldn't do it. So he's the one I want. He's the guy that has held the title and the guy I want to be. Well, what an exciting time for you and your family. Uh, your brother recently getting married to Chris Weidman's sister right before the fight. What, what a suit. They're going to have a super baby. Those two. I mean, that's going to be, <laughs> that's that- it, man. I mean, they're already, <laughs> They're already looking forward to that. I mean, they're they're already trying, man. They went on, they went out wow. on their honeymoon, and Look at they're that. back here. Tony's back in the teaching classes. She's a nurse at the local hospital. The wedding was nuts, man. Of course, those people from Long Island definitely know how to party. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's great to see the two families come together. And then, of course, a huge win for you, massive win. The fight that should get you the title shot, no doubt about it. And I hope you stick to those guns uh, because nothing else makes sense at this point. So I want to congratulate you on the win again. Uh, keep it up, my man. And, and, and good luck getting that title shot. I hope you do get it. Thanks, my friend. It's definitely a pleasure, and hopefully we can do it again sometime, my friend. Absolutely. There he is. Steven Wonderboy Thompson stopping by. My opinion, the number one contender in the welterweight division should most definitely, if I haven't made it clear enough, uh, fight the winner of Tyron Woodley versus Robbie Lawler. Of course, that fight happens July 30th in Atlanta, Georgia, UFC 201.